right, so you've read your email and hit the delete button, but is that email really gone forever? There's a good chance it might not be. We've all heard stories about how those emails can come back to haunt you personally or professionally. AOL's consumer advisor, Regina Lewis, is here to explain why email can have a longer life than you think and what you can do to keep yourself from getting burned. Regina Lewis, <laughs> welcome. No one wants to be burned. No, this is kind of scary. How is it that email can live on? Well, here's what happens when you send an email. Think of it like taking a picture. There's a snapshot at the beginning and on the receiving end. So people say, well, it passed through lots of servers. Yes, but it's not captured there. If you are using MSN, Yahoo, Google, AOL, they will, once you open that email, they'll get rid of it in a week unless you've opted not to have that happen. They all have unlimited storage, so you could say, hey, listen, store this forever, but you'd have to do it, otherwise it goes away. Why? Because it costs money to keep it, right? 20 emails a day, seven days a week for 10 years is 70,000 emails. They don't want to do that. Short-term exception is because people inadvertently delete email and go, oh my God, of course the one you deleted is the one you wanted. Mm -hmm. So then they'll have a trash can or recently delete it. So if you get something and you really want it gone fast, you may have to delete it twice. Empty that trash can. Yes, empty the trash can, good point. Now here's where it gets tricky. If you did years ago, or if when your email box is full, you've got one of the older systems, you're saving it on your computer hard drive, desktop, laptop. Then when you go to delete it, and this is why identity theft and even turning in computers is an issue, all it does is say, hey, listen, free up that space in case I need it later. But your computer's brain doesn't discern between the email you would dread if it resurfaced to the thing you care less about. So you don't know if it's really gone. It could have just moved. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So is there, <laughs> a, is there any... <laughs> Not that I'm concerned personally. Uh, yeah. This is just for yeah. everyone else out there who's sending sensitive emails. Is there any way to completely kill it off? There is, but it's almost like you have to, instead of whiting it out, you have to wipe it out. It's one of the most popular programs. We've got it here. It's about 40 bucks. It's like bleaching your clothes. So you could go through and do that. A lot of people are, because frankly, you've had computers for a long time. But here's the thing. Even if you wipe yours out, yes. that, you can't control what your recipient's doing with the email. Excellent point. They could have printed it. They could have forwarded it. So things like, you got to be really careful. I mean, think about it. Everything from, you know, that baby shower is a little boring to you'd think the boss would learn how to close a deal. <laughs> not good. Uh, not good. Yeah. In fact, you have some tips yes. about what you should and shouldn't do. Let's yes. go through those. First, never email anything you wouldn't say face to face. Yes, the anonymity. Some people have described it as truth serum. Like, the issue is not that you people lie in email. The issue is they're too honest. Bold. Yes, yes. yes. Exactly. There's something about not being face to face with a person yes. that emboldens you. Not a good idea. No. All right. Separate business and personal emails. Have yeah. two accounts, maybe? Absolutely have two accounts. Here's why people say, well, it's my cubicle. That's been my office for years. Um, if it's company property, it's company property. They reserve the right, and this is held up in litigation. People so going, they listen, keep it's the emails. Oh, yeah, because these days, look at the cover of the business section almost every day. They get in more trouble for deleting than they do saving. It is standard practice now in corporate litigation to say, we'd like your emails 10 to 20 years back. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Um, and don't email confidential information. Like what? Well, you know, oh, here's my credit card. I would never send you my American Express card number by email. Like, would you just order this I for me? That the Did other you? Day. Yes. <laughs> because and you're one step away from having somebody print it. Oh, I just left it out on the desk by accident. Wow. Or frankly, controversial. Sometimes people get an email and go, whether it's the baby shower or the boss, oh God, I wish I wasn't on this distribution list. Uh, you know what I mean? Point. Now my mother-in-law knows I saw it. Terrible. Uh, and final tip, we only have a few seconds left, but don't email angry. Yes. Here, here's your best move. Send it to yourself, sleep on it, review it the next morning. Odds are you'll be relieved, you'll make a few edits, and then send it. All right, very good advice, Regina Lewis. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. I'll email Thanks. you a thank you later. <laughs> All right, deal.